It's a San Komodo, yes. Okay. That's where. Um, I started, you know, when I was born, I started in Takrede, but then mm. started proper school, like formative school in a, in a San Gregoire. Mm. Mm. Then went to, then moved back to Takrede to Chapel Hill. Okay. Mm. Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill. Before, no? You know? Then I came <laughs> to Accra, then go to the BC, then went oh, to. Okay. So, what did you write to BC? A salmon DHHS. Wow. And the school's not to a not hey. shut down be any who will be a sound. Yes, yes. Now be shark. yes, yes, yes. That's why I wrote it. I wrote I wrote quite earlier. At what age? When I was writing, I was twelve. Twelve. Wow. Yes. So, okay, so hold on. Did they have any at in- what age <laughs> did you start class one? And did you jump some of the classes or you went through the normal? Yeah. Okay, so this is it. Um when I went to school, I told you I was in a San Quigua. Yes. So when I went to the school, I think I was a bit higher than the people. The Chinese star. Mm. Yes, a bit. <laughs> so when I started school, I was in KG2. Mm. First term did so well, second term above everybody else. So my mom came there and told them that. Mm. Mm. If you guys don't make this guy go to class four, you know, if you guys, <laughs> if you guys continue like this and then he goes with these people to class one, it's a I don't boy, think they yeah. Know so you take him to class two. So, ah, okay. so you didn't do class one? No, I didn't do class one. But the okay, kids, you know, did you finish? You didn't yeah, do kids, no, nursery one, nursery two. Did you do all yeah, that? Yeah, I did all that in Bethel. In okay. Takredi. Yeah, I did okay. all that. So from KG two so, straight to class mm-hmm. two. Yes. How old were you? You don't remember, remember. Mm-hmm. okay? Yes, but I don't remember. think it was. But I'm six. sure he was like four, five ish. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, was, I think I was normal at that time. Mm. Like seven? Yes, like seven. Mm. Okay. Then class two, same thing happened. Wow. Okay. Mm. Then the old woman went again and told them that if you take him back to class three, it's not going to happen. They're wasting our time. So it took me to class four. Hey. So, so after you just could, you did half, half, half. No. So after class four, then uh-huh. when I was coming to Takradi. They said I repeat class four again. Oh, okay. so okay, that was normal. Yes, yeah, so then I repeated class mm. four. Okay. Then went to the normal stage. Then went to class six, then moved to Accra, then to Infanspam. Wow. So when you were going to Infanspam, how old were you? I was 13. Hey! 13. 13. What? Were you yourself not worried? <laughs> Um, I was not. I, I mean, I was with people. I yeah. knew my mates that I was going with. I, I was friends with them. So, I mean, I was used to them. Wow. Mm. So, wait, you did just as one and two yeah. and three? Not and three. Ah, you didn't do three? You know, that's why I went to write at a Salman DHHS. Oh. Yes. So, what, what, how, how many ones did you get? Seven. Seven hey. ones? Yes. I was watching what? Captain Planet. Uh, you are hey. running around, you know? <laughs> yes. And then you went to Infantipim? Yes, I did. At 13? Yes, I did. So, so how was it like, you know, yeah. were you bullied because some small boy B who has come to school? How was it? Um, so, in Infantipim, bullying, I mean, it was not really that much. But mm. it was a normal, you had a normal bullying. Yes, I had a hey, normal bullying. Boy, bring your, I your mean, even among your own people, yeah. trying to worry you a bit, one, one or two, but it was not really that much. Because when we went to Fanspam, there was a new house being built. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so they housed all the form ones there. So okay. we're not really yeah, with the mixing seniors, with the so. seniors mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But they used to come mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they used to worry us a bit, one or two. But there, was, there were some seniors who purposely came to take me and took me to their court because they said I was too small and they were feeding me with milk and stuff. <laughs> oh, so <wow>. that, <laughs> and then <laughs> forcing, and forcing me to gym every <laughs> wow. and stuff like that. And growing up, I had some kind of bibliophobia. Okay. So I didn't like big books. Mm-hmm. I, one time, so when I was going to Genesis 1, my parents bought the Achilles and all those mm-hmm. things. And they're like, oh, so Akpini, these are your books. Instantly, I just vomited. You felt sick. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I vomited. So, um, growing up, my father used to actually cut the books okay. in pieces and wow. had to rebind them. Wow. I've, yes, he had to rebind to them smaller. to smaller pieces for yeah. me. So, two chapters, so three they're, chapters. They're, they're handy for so you. So, they're handy for me. But, but, but then later, uh-huh. I grew out of it. I mean, okay. when I went to school, when I went to Infanspam, yeah, my books were packed like that mm-hmm. at first. but. The other books that are there, oh, I mean, course. I've seen them all around. Yeah. So, 
I mean, it, you it, grew I grew over out that. of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I grew out of it. But did you have a normal childhood? You know, like a twelve-year-old would go out, and play, play with friends. Watch TV. Your friends would probably come to yeah. your house, running around. Going you for know, parties, you know, sometimes cake. not wearing slippers. <laughs> your mom hitting you. And all. did you have that kind yeah, of I childhood? Did. I did. You did? I did. But it's just that maybe it was compressed. But I did, mm. I, and I made a conscious effort too. Mm. I wanted to, because. Mm -hmm. At a point, I was like, no, it's not going to happen because I'll be, I'm too far away from my siblings. I mean, yeah. the age is not too much, mm -hmm. but when mm -hmm. you're going for programs and you're going for things, the knowledge gap is a bit too much. Right. Mm -hmm. So I tried my possible best to close it mm -hmm. all the time. And I mean, play with them and play with them. them. I mean, in, in fact, I actually used to force people to play paper, paper ball with me. Okay. I had friends who actually loved about it but they actually because did because we were still yeah, a we, child you know so because they actually kids did games. yes they actually did nana kujo and things some nice <laughs> so guys that would be cute you know? yes yeah. they actually please play with me <laughs> were you the youngest on campus when you went to the i think so yes mm. i did wow. i was i think I was. okay yes. and then preparation towards wasi yes that was a bit hard i think what is the most difficult exam mm. that you've ever written I or generally? For, I think generally. It's mm. just, I think it's a very difficult yeah. exam. Why? It's, Why do you think so? Because I think that people around that time, there are so many things that can distract you. That's one. And there are so many things to study. Because, you know, for university, if you go there and then you have studied this for the semester, that is all that is happening. Mm. But for... Wasi. Wasi, I think it's three years. Yes. And it's a lot. And it's vast, the yeah. teachers don't come as much. And mm -hmm. You're on your own, kind of. You kind have of, to survive yeah, bit, and make it. It's a bit it. difficult. So what, what course did you study in front of him? Arts. Mm -hmm. Okay. What were your electives? There was French, geography. And economics? Economics, yes. Okay. And there was elective right. arts, yes. And yes. then you finished in front of him. Yes. And uh, your grades were cool? They were right. Mm. Yes. The all right is what? Oh, the all right. <laughs> <laughs> As, and then to the University of Ghana? No, Gimpa. Oh, Gimpa. Oh, okay. okay. You didn't go to University of Ghana? No. Okay. Oh. All right. So what did you do at Gimpa? LLB. I did the law. Okay. Wow. Yes. Went to Gimpa. How old were you when you were entering Gimpa? I was 16. Hey! 16. Doing LLB. Yes. Hmm. Mommy, forgive me, okay? It's not <laughs> me. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> wow, wow. So, how yeah. was it when you started? Um, in Gimpa, when I started, I think it was, it was new for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was new. I mean, I hadn't... The whole place was new. I think yeah. it, was, uh, it was hard. It was a bit hard to adjust mm. to Gimpa. It was mm. a bit hard. We... I mean, it was hard. It was Be, really being hard. in class with adults, yeah. you know, studying the same thing. Yes, and how did you cope? And there's the whole emotional maturity thing. Yes. Too. I mean, you might have the intellectual quotient, but the EQ is a bit important mm -hmm. for yeah. university education. Yeah. Yes, because, you know, there are girls, there are stuff like that. Mm. So there are all these kind of things, yes. So at what point did you have a girlfriend? My um, first girlfriend, I think it was. I think it was in Form 2. No, wait. Uh, senior high school? Yes. Okay. Who left me for... But, but you were 14 or 15 by then? I think 15. But then she was in Form 1. In oh, Accra uh -huh, Girls. Uh -huh. And then she left... Uh, in Accra, uh, in Accra Girls. Yes. And, and she, she left, left me because her, she said the Aquinas head boy liked her or something like that. <laughs> oh. Some funny reason like that. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh. So how did you take it? No, wait. Broken so that boy. Aquinas boy. Beat and fancy friend boy. No, head boy. Head boy. Head boy. Not, not no, just I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Head but I think, boy. That was, I think that was their boy's school. Mm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, mm -hmm. anyway. So, I think maybe what so how did she in, tell you? I mean, what, it was a letter. Was like, it was a letter. Uh -huh. So, oh. do you remember some of the words? I'm sure this is your first girlfriend, so you should remember some. Right? Oh, so, some of the words she used. How did it hit you? How did oh, she no, say I, it? I mean, she said. I mean, so, you opened the letter. And I was so happy. I was thinking like, uh huh, and then you started. Was it dear boo? No, I, I think oh, it was a penny. The, it, I think it was a Straight to the point, yeah. So yeah, dear penny. Uh huh. Wasn't dear actually? Hello, a penny or hi or uh, just a penny? Then, I think it was just a penny. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. And then yeah, she said, oh. I mean, there, were, there was no all those fancy. Yeah, no, the, no, no, the no, no. Moonlight thing has mm -hmm. done. No, 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 no. Straight to the point. 
not straight to the point i mean how are you doing yes. i hope school is well that mm. kind of thing mm-hmm. but yeah that was the reason mm. i think i told one of my friends was it fifi or somebody i told one mm-hmm. of my friends and how did you nurse your broken heart i think well, we were just playing ball well, and things we, <laughs> <laughs> we were playing oh. football and stuff like that maybe it just passed it was one of those things wow. and then your second girlfriend because that was your first the second where did you grab um, second girlfriend i think it would be in university gempa wow. gempa i think it was a gempa yes mm. yes it was a gempa then have you had many because you are even thinking was it gempa you are not sure oh no but you see girlfriend uh, mm-hmm. you know I want to know when we started. That's important. <laughs> I wanted to know whether I was in Gempa or when when we had finished. When, oh, when are I was you still ready. together? No, 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 no. Okay. No, I wanted to know when we started. Like uh-huh. the Gempa person, she was in Gempa with me, okay. and then asked to when. Was she older? <laughs> yes, yeah, she of, was. Obviously, <laughs> because he was sixteen or so. So you were sixteen at that time. Uh, oh no no no! Oh, I was getting to the grown. end. I was like nineteen. Nineteen. And 18. she was how old? I think twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. All right. So. And then you were called to the bar. Yes, last At year. At 22. Yeah, last year, yeah, October. You wow. must have been very proud of yourself. Yes, I was. I was. Share the experience with us. You know, it's a bit hard because mm-hmm. you started the journey with a lot of people. Yeah. And, and uh, they're not all there with you. Cuz you know, some people fall off mm. at the entrance exam stage. Yeah. Some people fall off at the at the bar level, at the stage, bar yes. level yeah. stage too, and stuff like that. But all in all, I mean, you just thank God that at least yeah. you are there, and then maybe you can help mm. in any way you can to get them to also get there. So wait, was the exam easy? Because I know the bar is very, very difficult. I mean, we we hear the news about some lawyers not being able to pass the exam in there demonstrating and whatnot whatnot how difficult was the bar exam yeah i failed one paper actually wow yeah i did i failed um family law mm. um it's nine pa- it's ten papers mm-hmm. and when you fail three you write all the ten again mm-hmm. mm. but when you fail one or two then you write mm-hmm. that right. one and then you can nice. join yeah so it was a bit hard mm. it was okay but what wow. do you think about the legal education mm. as a whole? I mean, you 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 know all the issues that have come out of it. The fact that they don't want to open up, you know, yeah. to have more people tightening things up and all that. We had a former chief justice say that. Listen, we are not. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. We're not going to open it up just for anybody, anybody and everybody just to be in it. You have successfully gone through it and yeah. come out. What is the problem? Is it oh, that no, 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 the no, no, council no, no, no. needs to do something? Is no, no, no. It, what is the problem? Or no, no. you think that they be, just don't want to open things up? It's not, I, it's not anybody's fault, actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not uh, the student's fault. Mm-hmm. It's not... The lecturers. The lecturers' fault. It's not... I think maybe there should be some kind of reform, which they are actually thinking about mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. So, um, I mean, to say that they are not opening up to is a bit not fair because they are opening up they okay. have opened up other campuses yeah there's one at green hill now there's one in kumasi mm-hmm. and uh but and they've also there have been new reforms and now if you pass if you there's a pass mark now mm-hmm. they have scrubbed the um the interview process yeah so i think by and by it will get better mm-hmm. it should get better but how is it like being a lawyer in ghana um it the respect is really ma- a lot actually the, mm. the respect is i i didn't expect that i mean you go to a place and and i, I and i keep saying that i don't want to lose my youth it's mm. very very important mm-hmm. to me you know i used to go to barber shops um when i was a bit younger with my <laughs> friends please don't say you're a bit younger please yeah you're when, <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, it's relative. with my friends <laughs> yeah. and then you know they can have any haircuts they want to yeah because yeah they want they can get their zamanis in their hair they can <laughs> leave the middle one up and things like that and you and you're like oh god you i can't wish i could do that, that. you yeah. can do that because yeah. you can't go and stand in front of justice that with yeah. zaman <laughs> in your like hair joke. or you cannot go and you cannot go and sit in a law school classroom with mm-hmm. that when we're being called to the bar like shortly after we're called mm-hmm. to the bar certain judges were sworn in 
Mm -hmm. And the Chief Justice was saying that they have so much power, they can break, they can take land from someone and give to somebody yeah. else, they can break up marriages, they can remove children from their parents, yeah. mm. they can do all that. Then it hit me, I was like, Aish. So uh, somebody will actually come and tell me that you have to do this for me and yeah. how if when I feel mm -hmm. like I can actually get somebody to lose his life savings or yeah. I can get somebody mm -hmm. to, to lose his family. Ruin somebody's yeah. life. It was actually a bit so hard for me mm -hmm. like to grasp all that. But by and by, I mean... Now you're used to yeah, it. Yeah, you're getting used to it. No, I've not gotten anybody. I've mm. not made anybody lose their okay. life savings yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, mean, I'm not, I don't know how it will feel like, mm -hmm. but I have seen the other side. That mm -hmm. is the good side, mm -hmm. where I've seen a mother being hugging their child because mm -hmm. custody was given to her. The case mm. that you worked on? Yes, that okay. I did. I have seen somebody get their money because of a letter I have written. Mm. I've seen somebody get their lease from the land commission because yeah. their house got burnt and their original lease is missing. I mean, the joy on people's faces. But, but, but you know, you look so young yeah. and you're defending people and I'm just kind of picturing how it would be like yeah. you standing in court and all that. Are people so confident, you know, bringing their cases away, to you? you know, they are, so it has, so it they has. can't really see. <laughs> no, when they, when they but, come to the office. Yeah, when they're coming to you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, and, and then I think one, one day one of my clients came to deliver um, something to me. And then I was in shorts and a shirt. Oh, that makes like, it even worse. She just looked at my face like, ah, Am I where shabby are you? the right thing? Like, am I, I, yeah. like, you look so different. Yeah. And then at that time, so I had cut my hair. Like, so it was... So you look like the boy that you are. Yes, I am a boy, actually. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Um, that, so, yeah, that, that one there, yeah. I Have you lost the case yet? Um, for, for trial, yes, mm -hmm. but then it wasn't really something that I had started, but yes, obviously. So what's the future for you? I mean, as it stands now, one of Ghana's youngest lawyers, what's the future? Chief Justice? Uh, it won't be bad, but <laughs> uh, I really want to get into finance, um, international finance. Uh, so I'm trying to write the Chartered Financial Analyst exam, the CFE. Mm -hmm then maybe get some MSc in economic management or something. You won't ever think of politics? Uh, yeah, because where he's going there is in the president of Ghana. And you're bad. <laughs> I know, like he's doing well, like, why not, you know? <laughs> so when that happened, remember our interview today? Yeah. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Akpene, so uh, before you leave us, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are inspired by you in fact i'm very very inspired yeah. by you now one more question can you be a very good christian or a very religious person and be a lawyer yes you can mm, when you have to defend somebody you know people come to you with all kinds of stories sometimes you have to make up sometimes you know this is not the right thing to say but i have to defend this person would you take a case like that everybody's supposed to be defended mm -hmm. everybody deserves representation mm -hmm. in some form or the other the fact that you present somebody does not necessarily mean that you do not want the law to work. Mm. You want, you actually sometimes representing them because you actually do want the law to work. Mm. You try your best to, because when you leave people unrepresented, most of the times their right to a fair trial is a bit, mm. you know, imbalanced because they need to be represented. There are certain things that they need mm. to. Because sometimes people, I've seen people, I've gone to court where I've seen people accepting uh, criminal responsibility for certain things because mm. they think they actually did do it, mm -hmm. but they actually do have a good defense. Okay. They have a reason why they mm. were supposed to. So you, everybody needs to be represented. Wow. All right, counsel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you My very much. Akpe. So, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so now um, I have, we have a lawyer friend. Yes. So we are not afraid one to that. run into any issues. Yes. <laughs> we'll call you. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to go for a quick break. <laughs> and we'll be back this more right here on Upside Down. Don't go nowhere. Hello, viewers. I'm feeling very frustrated and bored in Sambulai. I'm very happy. If you don't understand, 
Don't worry, call me self. I don't understand. In this addition, Vodafone Ghana has now made it possible to send money from Vodafone Cash to all network free. We will cross over to our senior reporter for more details. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing in front of downtown. You know, oh, I'm learning to get to make a block. I'm not going to get set. Vodafone, I'm not going to get set. Ultimate Sika to Tobia, Emily to Tobia. I go all the network. I will check up there with TC Montezo. I'm not going to get it. My tenant says, Jordan, you put your charges, man, on me. Charges on your womb, low, and the harm on you. A beer which says, Do the harm, charges or clung down. Hanging on your friend on me, he sent a manica, charges, man, or charges I made ye, Naka charges, and when we know, Manica Fanny BP, or Hanny Buddha for all. For me, I do a lot of online transactions. I think I see it. See, the excitement for me is that I get to save a lot on Vodafone cars. Please put me down. I'm so excited. I can now send money to all networks without any charges. Me ye jedi ni ba. A bribe se se mi chia me juma ye fokam. Sika mi chia se charges no. E do so do do. Me se 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 di e. Me da Vodafone cash a se. Sending money on Vodafone cash to all networks is now free. Send any amount of money as many times as you like to all networks for free. Dial star one one zero hash now to send money. Any amount for masumo. This is the red news. Uh, apologize. The future is exciting. Ready? John, the football pal. They say uncle your best man. We guy, edition match with you. Maria Munso, a panusi shianwa. They say on shabo. I bet the bus here is number. The birthday who? And the football team. Sure. Football season in a baby. Football move football. But you go TV decoder, we'll go antenna. And it will back to subscription. And your 109 Ghana cities pair. Then we'll go TV plus. Asset it. Go TV. Live it. Love it. It's still on upside down. The hashtag is upside down. And the WhatsApp number 0550 Let's hear from you. And this show is probably brought to us by. Vodafone, the future is exciting. Ready? Yeah, indeed, ready. And today mm. we have a an interesting guest. Um, I think once we are drawing closer to the political season, the election period, we need to spice it up and turn things upside down a little bit. So we have a guest who is going to give us a more political view. Of course, I mean, <laughs> once you know your constituencies mm -hmm. and you know um, your presidential candidate, it's also very, very important yeah. that you know um, the candidates, I mean, who will likely be your member of parliament, yes. your rep, you mm -hmm. know, in the House. And it is very important that beyond you knowing them politically, yes. you should also know the other side. You know? That's right. Now, this man that we are going to be talking to... Um, has it all, you know. Yeah. He's been in the house for quite some time now. He's also been a journalist. And one thing that I really love, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that many people love that about and him, I also love, it, is, is the, the richness, you know, yeah. of this language. Exactly. Very, very ornamental. He does yeah. not complete one statement without a proverb. a proverb. And he's going to be telling us <laughs> how come he knows so much proverbs. A man who has died in the market, you don't need to announce his funeral. <laughs> Credibility matters a lot, my brother. We all know the truth we have unpeddled, and we have said it, that if a lion is found of patronizing the marketplace, they will treat it like a puppy. <laughs> Today, if Dr. Bawunye should greet anybody, he meets you and greets you good morning, you look at the position of the sun before you respond. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yep. our guest today is the Member of Parliament for Nar Sanarigu, the Honorable ABA yes. Kusemi, make some noise! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Honorable. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. How I wish um, I could start off with a proverb. I, I think it's But I'm, I'm very right. limited, you know. Oh, oh, maybe he can start. Well, well, he, 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 he can always. They say that don't dance yourself lame before the real dance. Nice one. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, the drum beat is yet to come. Yes, mm. yes, so yes. I'm sure that uh, as we go along, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the one who roasts meat will not have a dry mouth. Ah, Absolutely ah, not. Ah, so I love that. I'm sure it will come. Honorable, we, we just love you, Ahmed. Yeah. You are different and everybody knows you by your proverbs but who is 
ABA Fuseni. I mean, we know the Al Hassan Bashir um, Fuseni, but that other A. Yes. What is, that is it? Yes, the A is also Al Hassan. Oh. After my grandfather. Okay. So it was your named after name... my grandfather Al Hassan. Okay, so your name is. Al Hassan Bashir, Bashir Al Hassan, Al -Hassan Fuseni. Fuseni. Yes. Wow. I'm a big man. <laughs> yeah. So, so take us to your childhood. Where were you born? Who are your parents? Do you have any other siblings? Yes, I, I was actually born in Tamale Tishugus, to be specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Within the Tamale uh, metropolis mm -hmm. on second February 1956. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're and one year older than Ghana. Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> so I was. Uh, a Bonafide citizen at uh, 1957 when Ghana mm. came into being. Yeah. And uh, so, like it is being said, uh, you don't show an indigenous the way to his house. Mm. Mm. And so, uh, uh, from there, I attended uh, the Tishigu Anglican Primary School, 1966, 1962 63 mm. academic year. Okay. And then uh, from there, went to Middle. Mm -hmm. From Kalpohem Middle to, and those days, we. You can only go to secondary school to the common entrance examination. Mm. So I took the common entrance examination when I was in middle school from three. I was mm. almost at the terminal end of my middle school okay. education. Okay. And I went to Yendi secondary school. Mm. I mean Yendi. Mm -hmm. And then from there to Tia Media secondary school, 1978 to 1980. In Kumasi? Yes, Tia Media. Okay. So I'm a product of uh, the Amas okay. wow. fraternity. Okay. Okay. Mm. They say in Amas, we say that when they are counting hot things, they remove fire first. <laughs> So um, from Tia Media to the University of Ghana, Legon, wow. where I did political science. Okay. Um, then I, after on completion of my national mm. service, I was first posted to the Ministry of Information, mm. and then later on to Ghanaian Times. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started my journalism career. Wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, as a matter of fact, on campus, we used to do some bit of media practice. I've always. Uh, uh, about a keen uh, interest in, in becoming a journalist. Mm, so okay. even while uh, on campus, we used to do our whole magazines and others. Okay. Yeah, and I was yeah. uh, very active in that. Mm. So when I was posted to Ghanaian Times, uh, it gave me the opportunity mm. to practice my mm. the little that I learned. And mm. I can see without any item of station that uh, Ghanaian Times has been very crucial in, 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 mm -hmm. in doing me with the requisite mm. skills yeah. to become a journalist. So I was there completed my service, I stayed over for a, mm. about roughly one year. Mm -hmm. And then I was employed by Daily Graphic. Mm. So I went first, I was uh, assigned to a mirror where I, I wrote the column on foreign affairs. Okay. So those who used to read foreign affairs mm -hmm. and uh, uh, on a weekly basis cherished that column very much. Mm. And yeah. uh, I was there until I was appointed the first political editor of the Daily Graphic Okay, so, so let, let's go back to yeah. your days on Legon campus yes. because since that is where you really started you know media. I mean oh, yeah. your media yeah. stuff and all how, how what was exactly was the magazine on just on your halls and sc the school yeah it was basically about hall affairs mm. okay. you know in those days you used what, to do publications you? I was in Legon Hall okay, okay. I thought in Commonwealth uh, <laughs> the Commonwealth were our vassals <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in any case, I was an associate vendor. Were you charging <laughs> with them? Were you doing all those kind of things with oh, them? Legon, we were the main charges. Okay. And I, I can tell you without that that it was like a, a, a hobby. Mm. You had to do it as a matter of fashion to be recognized in those mm -hmm. days. Okay. And so maybe for those of us who were vertically challenged, that was a way in which you could <laughs> bring up your, <laughs> yeah. your, your, your stature. So how mm. popular were you on campus? Uh, actually, I played football. Mm. I was, I was uh, when I, when when. I was in the uh, middle school and mm. secondary school. I was a very good footballer. Mm. Okay. I used to play uh, on the left wing. And uh, I can tell you that I had a lot of dribbling skills. Mm. Uh, so so which, which football club do you support in Ghana? Oh, Accra has a folk. Okay. okay. And, yes. and international in fact, class? there are two teams in Ghana, Accra has a folk and the rest. <laughs> oh, see you. No, no, it's Kotoko and the rest. <laughs> and international teams? Uh, Barcelona. Wow. Oh, okay. I like Barcelona. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Interesting. You know, yeah. when when you were growing up, I mean, I, I just want to know, at which point or which moment do you keenly remember that you knew that at this point, like, I'm going to be a media person? They say that the calf that will grow to become the head of the, uh, to become the leader in the uh, head, mm -hmm. is spotted from the day it is born. Mm. Okay. Uh, from my young pioneer days, and let me say this, uh, that is what we've lost 
improperly grooming and conscientizing our youth. Mm -hmm. We searching for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the founder of this nation, mm -hmm. put in place a young pioneer movement. I'm sure you must yeah. have heard it. Yeah. Where at very early ages, when you go to primary school from class one, class two onwards, you are enrolled into mm -hmm. that. And they, you are begin, you are, you are, they begin the conscientization process of letting you feel mm -hmm. like you must work for the supreme interests yeah. and aspirations of your country, country and your people. To imbue the spirit of patriotism in, in, mm. in the youth. Mm. So that at that early age, they inculcate those values mm -hmm. and they grow mm. to become useful citizens of Ghana. Mm. So in those days, you know, they will train you to write and uh, they can ask you, okay, write a piece on this one. And then you write mm. something. Yeah. So that is where I, I developed the, mm. the, the, interest. The, the interest in the skill of how to write and especially like mm. it was not just composition but they can give you an animal describe this animal and mm. and, and and you do it and present it to your teachers so, how, how so that's why i yeah. had that uh, uh, initial uh, mm. stint with uh, so, so how, how different is that um from what you see today i mean you you hear of campus life and all that when you were in legon and um, today what has changed uh i think many things have changed mm. um the very atmosphere. When we were in Legon, of course, the numbers were not as big as you have to Yes. Mm -hmm. How many people were sleeping in one room? We were, we were two in a room. Even eventually, so the person moved to another room, which was vacant. So I was virtually in a room alone. Wow. wow. And so you can see uh, the, the And that is why a lot of us feel that those of us who have the burden of leadership today yeah. mm -hmm. must endeavor to leave a better legacy for the upcoming generation tomorrow. Yeah, right. Otherwise, we had the benefit of... Uh, studying in environments that were very conducive to studies mm -hmm. and today mm. even some how to even lay your head is a problem yeah and i know uh, a lot of parents are, have had to cough up seven thousand mm. I, I just heard that the lego for instance mm. is charging seven thousand eight thousand twelve thousand and above i mean i mean it's it, quite it, expensive it undermines today. the spirit of equal opportunities for all citizens of this land mm. and i think that uh, uh, those of us who have the benefit of uh, being entrusted with power yeah. to stay on, the, on behalf of our people must do better mm. to create a more congenial yeah. atmosphere, to create a better Ghana yeah. for the generations that are yet unborn. Yeah. Honorable, you, I mean, you just mentioned about the parents. I, I, I just want to take you back a bit. I mean, your parents, uh, yes. both mom and dad, what were they into and how was the upbringing for you? Uh, let me see this. Uh, my mother, my father was, uh, was, my father is late. I think mm. two years ago he passed on. Mm. Oh. He was the, he was a chief. Mm. The, uh, is the Duhana of the Bambiao area. There's a, a, a chieftaincy title in the Bambiao area in Tishu. Mm. Uh, and that is where my father was chief. Mm. And his father and his grandfather, his great, great, great grandfather before had been chief. So yeah. it got to my turn. Uh, my father was blessed with, by the Almighty Allah to have lived on over 100 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so, um, but my mother is still alive. Okay. Uh, my mother is very old. Mm. Uh, she's in Sanargu. She was a petty trader. And uh, I can say without any item of a station that if I'm asked who is my best friend, I say it's my mother. Wow. Mm. Yeah. How come? Um, I, cannot, I cannot repay my mother mm. for what she's done for me. Mm. But for her, I know that it's almighty Allah who creates people and your destiny is there. But I can see without any iota of hesitation that, but for my mother, you I may be not here. have been where I am. Mm. Wow. Because even in those days, it was not uh, popular and widespread mm. to get children to go to school. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, when uh, my senior brother, uh, we are four, we're four in the family, but not three. Mm -hmm. uh, my senior brother happened to live with my father's senior brother. So okay. I was the only son in the, house. My, in the house with my mm. father and my mother. Okay. So when it was time to go to farm, my father said, no, I, I have to follow him and go to farm. Mm -hmm. So for the first year, when my colleagues, uh, my counterparts and age mates were going to school, I, I was going to farm mm. with my old man. So in the second year, my mother said, oh, it is, I think it is important to also let our son go to school. Yeah. Mm. And uh, he had a disagreement with my old man. The old wow. man thought I should go to farm. My mother taught I should go mm. to school. So there was a bit of a small Tension argument. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, our, in those days, especially, uh, uh, in our area, it is patrilineal. And not only that, but the, 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 the males take precedence over the, 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 the females. Mm. Men have a better say and much more important say than women. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in those days, it was uh, women who had to listen to their dad. But I'm sure my mother used her persuasive skills. Yeah. Mm to persuade my old man. No wonder her son is a politician today. <laughs> Eventually, um, <laughs> uh, 
uh, he allowed me to go. But yeah. the full burden of my education was born by my mother. Mm. Wow. Fortunately, she was a petty trader. She traded in cloths, jewels. She mm. did sold some few things. Yeah. So how, how many to... wives did your father have? Uh, at one time, one. Wow. Yeah, it was only when um, there was a separation between my father and my mother. Okay. Not that they, 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 they were no longer there, but there was a separation. And mm. my father took on another wife. Wow. Yeah, but that's very impressive, you know. Yeah. Yes. A chief one. and yeah. Yeah. He, was a, he was a Muslim. Yes. And one wife. Yes. Very impressive. I'm, I'm sure that uh, it looks like it's out of the normal. <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> yeah, exactly so. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I can say without any hesitation that my mother. Um, is, is, a, is a pivotal part of my life. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, like I said, I cannot repay her yeah. for all that she's done for me. Absolutely. Yeah. And, God uh, bless her. Maybe that's why yeah. she's lived on so yeah. long. By the grace of Allah, she's still alive. Yeah. And uh, Allah Almighty says that the one who pays his dues yeah. will get the recognition. Amen. So I have no doubt in my mind that the, my, my mother has done her part for me. Mm. And uh, when I took my first salary, mm. I went and gave it to her. Wow. She looked at it and there were tears in her eyes. I said, no, go and give it to your father. And I said to her, mom, you deserve it. He said, yes, but go and give it to your father first. Mm -hmm. And then you, you gave so it to your dad? So I went to give it to my father. My father took it. I said, no, have you given it to your mother? Go mm. and give it to your mother. Mm. Ah. So it really touched me. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I pray that your, your kids do it for you as well. <laughs> By the grace of Allah Almighty. Well. Yes, so yes. on Legon campus, you studied political science and what? I majored in political science with geography. Mm. You never did English? No, I didn't do English. So wow. where is all <laughs> this your skills with the language coming from? Uh, it's Almighty Allah. It's a gift of Allah. Mm. Wow. You know, the seed planted by the Almighty Allah cannot be destroyed by the most devastating drought. Mm. It's Allah's mm. gift. And the... Uh, um, it's his providence. So mm. let's, let's, let's just put it at that. But um, a lot of it comes from sitting and listening to the older people. Okay. Mm. When you have time, just spend about some 10, 15, 20 minutes. Mm. You can drink from their deep-seated fountain of wisdom. What we'll we'll be coming pipe. to that, the yeah. things that we have to learn. But he also did radio, and um, you hosted, uh, co-hosted Alaj and Alaj with Alaj Baturi. Yeah, sure. And that was huge. That, that program was yeah. big. Tell us about Alhaji and Alaji. Yes. Uh, like I said, you don't show an indigenous the way to his house. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in the run-up to the 2000 election, you know, the political temperature in the country had really gone up. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that was, incidentally, the year we had the first transition. Mm. Uh, so after the elections, His Excellency President Kufo won, became yeah. president. But the atmosphere became very, very difficult. Mm. You could see that the preponderance of the media at that time were more or less pro-government. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you, 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 you didn't have uh, many media houses striking the balance in such a manner that people will be comfortable to appear there and uh, express divergent views and opinions. Yeah. Mm. So, um, Alaji Batude be my friend. We sat down, we're discussing together with, uh, let me pay tribute to him, Alaji Tanko. Mm. Okay. He was also part of it. We mm. discussed and we said, look, why don't we find a way in which we can give alternative voice mm. to many of the voiceless, millions of voiceless people across the length and breadth of our country so that they can vent their uh, feelings on the way the country is being run. Mm. So That's we sat down, brainstormed, mm. and at the end, Alaji Baturi and myself yeah. decided to say, okay, we'll take up the program. Now, what name do we give to the program? We considered a lot of names. Mm. It was a whole debate. Yeah. <laughs> so we debated it for two days. Mm. Then uh, Alaji Baturi said, look, it is, the, the answer is yes, very simple. You are Alaji AB if you say I'm Alaji Baturi. Why would you say Alaji and Alaji? Yeah. That's all. So that is how <laughs> that started. Uh, the story came mm. on Alaji and Alaji. And uh, we first started at, uh, uh, what's the name of this radio station? Uh, gold? Gold? No, not gold. Gold inherited it from, uh, oh, they were in just uh, 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 after the, the cemetery, the Awudomi Cemetery here. Mm. Uh, I forgot this radio station's name. And so from there... It wasn't then, Groove. No, it wasn't Groove. Groove, then we, groove no. no. We, then we transited into... I remember in the course okay. of the listen. 
and then we we, 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 we transited to, to Radio Gold. Mm. Yeah. And then from uh, since Radio Gold is still now Radio Gold is uh, been shut down. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's now with uh, Pan Africa TV. Mm. Mm. So so now um, in 2000 is President Kofo. So Radio Gold is pro NDC, and now there is the NPP government. How difficult was it, you know, and also making sure that your voice was heard. So I'm sure you went really for the government. So how, how did you manage that? Yeah, um, the difficulty in this uh, part of the world is that, and I think that is something we need to work on. Mm. When political parties are in opposition, they cherish the pr principle of free speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are champions, human rights advocates, and would go to the high heavens to champion why there should be plurality of the media. Mm. But when they get into power, the mm. attitude changes. So was it Vibe FM you were looking for? I think Vibe FM. Mm. Vibe FM. Fantastic, okay. madam. God bless you. Amen. Mm. So you see, this, this is um, um, uh, the attitude that gave birth, like I said, to Alaji Alaji, where mm -hmm. alternative voices have to be found okay. to enable people to ventilate whatever views that they have. Mm. And so, uh, I think that we as politicians have a bounding duty. Mm. Mm. Instead of contracting the, the, the realms of freedom of speech, mm. instead of contracting the space for media plurality, we should be expanding. Yeah. And I think that there's so much space still there, out there, for us to ensure that uh, 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 we encourage the plurality of the media. And that's why I am vehemently opposed to the shutting down of radio stations. Yeah. Mm. I agree. There must have been some infractions, uh, 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 some of the radio stations and others engaging. Mm -hmm. But why? If you want to kill a, a mosquito, do you use a sledgehammer? No. <laughs> exactly. You don't. If, uh, madam, assuming without admitting, a mosquito settles on your cheek and I want to, because our people say it is the mischief of the mosquito that enables the ordinary citizen to slap the chief. Yeah. You see, oh. so if, 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 if I want to kill a mosquito on your descent, do I use a sledgehammer? If, if I use I a sledgehammer, slap. I'm killing you and not the mosquito. Yes. Yeah. So yes. it's the same thing that those organ media organizations that are involved in media infractions, the intent of the, 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 the uh, broadcast law that we, we formulated was not to kill them, mm -hmm. was to give them opportunity to be reformed. Mm. If there, there was an error, you give them the opportunity to make good the, the infraction that they have made. So they have not paid, they have not lived up to their financial obligations. You give them the opportunity. You yeah. don't shut them down. What do you make of journalists today? You know, uh, sensationalism, non-accuracy of information, just um, wanting to be the first to break news, yes. and so we yeah. do not double check and all that. How, what do you make of journalists today? See, one, one of the key points, and uh, let me be fair enough to say that uh, it's a problem that predated this per, 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 uh, current generation. Mm -hmm. uh, it started during our time, and I was an advocate of that, that we need to have a situation where people who are media practitioners do so as a calling. Yeah. Not just because I don't have a job, then maybe let me see if I can hang on to this place mm -hmm. in, in, as a stopgap to something that I want to do yeah. later. Because you see, if you are not motivated by the calling, the ethics of all the things that have been initiated in our GGA code of ethics and all mm -hmm. those things will become a, a, a mere decorative piece. Mm -hmm. So that if we are imbued by that uh, uh, calling, and, 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 and we enter into media practice, we we'll endeavor to be professional. Mm. I have always said that it is not about the political uh, affiliation of anybody. Mm. You can be the general secretary of the MPP or the NDC and be a very professional journalist. Of course. Yeah. OK? I, I, in the media practice, was associated with the NDC. Mm -hmm. But in my practice, for instance, in those days when the general secretary of the MPP was Dambotri, yeah. If he spoke to Dambochi, if Dambochi had any news to break, he would call me first. Because mm. mm. he was confident that, notwithstanding whatever they are, I was professional. When you sit on that job there, you have a bounding duty mm. to be professional. You have right. a bounding duty to be fair, mm. balanced, to, to, to all the uh, uh, constituents that, that, that you work for. Mm. And so from that standpoint, I'm sure that if all of us as journalists are minded by this in some of the overly sensational things that we are talking about mm. could have been cured. Yeah. Because your professionalism will always remind you mm. that first mm. you have a duty to check and cross check. Yeah. Of course. And then in 2012, you decided to proceed now to Parliament House. What informed that decision? Yeah, Madam, before that, um, 
In fact, some four years back, mm -hmm. uh, well at Daily Graphic, there were about three busloads of people from my constituency. Mm -hmm. okay. That time it was Tamil enough. Mm -hmm. And so they had come, young men mm -hmm. had come from the constituency, wanting me to come and contest for the, for the Tamil seat. enough uh, mm -hmm. uh, primaries in the NDC. Wow. Well, how was the relationship with them like? And yeah, like I said, I, any time I, I come home, I mingle with people. Mm. I'm a very free, easygoing person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is why they felt you like be the to, right person. I like to, to sit with people. I like mm. to sit, we chat, we do so many things. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm sure the youth were very, very forthcoming. Came mm. there to encourage me. At that time, my senior... So they came from Tamale? Yeah. All the way here. My senior brother was uh, the late... Uh, Honorable Abu Karsman. He was the member oh. of parliament mm -hmm. for that area. Okay. So when they came, I said, look, yeah, but we are from the same area. You know, in our tradition, you don't jump over the landlord's feet mm -hmm. to patronize his bedroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. you know that the, 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 my senior brother is there, and I cannot yeah. jump over him to yeah. contest him. The right thing must be done. So we should wait. They were very disappointed. In fact, there were some who held insults at me and called me a, 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 a bloody coward mm. and that I didn't want to face. Uh, some tough competition for me. Mm. But I said that everything in this world has its time. Yeah. So it should be the time. Mm. Fortunately, by the grace of Allah Almighty, in 2012, Saunaru Constituency was created mm -hmm. mm. out of part of Tamil North Centre and a bit of South. And so uh, they say that if you have been going around and parasiting food and they call for free <laughs> food, it's like your wife has cooked. <laughs> so uh, when Sanargu came, yeah. uh, by the grace of Allah, it was a done deal. Yeah, yeah I felt like it was yours. Yeah. You so know? Uh, mm -hmm. this time, what the youth had been yearning yeah. for, yeah, we're there together. It. You know, so, a little, a little uh, bit whispered. Mm. To August 2012, um, mm. we went for the primaries. Yeah. By the grace of Allah, won, and that is how I transited mm. from media practice to, to politics. Wow, the uh, members of parliament um, talk about constituents coming in, mm. some with their problems. You mm. know, you have mm. to be paying school fees, giving chop money. You know, that. you are an opposition member of parliament. How difficult is this for you now? Uh, you know, our people say that the hyena doesn't know the price of a goat. Mm. So you really catch and chop. They yeah. don't care. They know there's a value that is on the goat. So yeah. it is not only just about whether you are in opposition, but they see you as a principal instrument for resolving their issues. Yeah. I can tell you without any out of it, that even in opposition, I am constructing roads. Mm. I'm doing electricity. Mm. Just getting poles and wires and others to go and steal well via villages, mm -hmm. extending water supply, yeah. mm. building uh, public places of convenience, and so many other things that you associate with government. Yeah. Mm. So um, a lot of it, like I said, comes from also, I like will call it a calling, mm. uh, the, how you feel about your people. Mm. Okay. I went into politics principally to make a difference in the lives of my people. Okay. Okay. And are you proud of yourself with what I can say without any item of station that by the grace of Allah in my eighth year, I can say without any item. And the people confirm. Mm. Mm. There are many places they tell you, uh, MP, unless until you tell us that you will no longer contest, mm. we shall be with you all the way. Wow. So 2020 is I've around the corner. I've contested three primaries. I've won all. Mm. So, and, and by the grace of Allah, um, in the parliamentary election and the presidential election, in my constituency, no other party has won one police station in my constituency before. Wow. When Sanaru was created in 2012. Mm. Wow. So by the grace of Allah, it is by dint mainly of the hard work we've done. Mm. We became MP. There were many towns and villages that had no light. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they all have lights today. Within two years, by the grace of Allah, the whole place was. Yeah. And, and uh, to quote somebody, yeah. electrified. <laughs> you know, two years ago. Water. I, yeah. mm -hmm. Our mothers used to carry. Uh, this uh, bucket, the buckets, uh, the big, uh, the I don't pans. know what I have to call it, the, the bucket, basins. those cans, those bases, big bases, yeah. and walk miles mm. to go and fetch even water that even they give it to you, you may not want to drink. Mm. Today, by the grace of uh, the hard work we had done, mm. today they drink pipe bone water in their homes. Wow, oh. that's that's nice. Villages where there was no light for them to even uh, mm. uh, get their children to study. By the grace of Allah, today they are teaching computer literacy mm. in villages in my mm. constituency. Yeah. Wow. Because apart from getting them light, they are building schools and getting them light. We have supplied computers. Interesting. Wow. And they are teaching them computer literacy. So yeah. 2020, how is it looking? So by the grace of Allah Almighty, um, you say that if it will rain, you see it in the sky. Absolutely. Yeah. The class will tell you. Mm. Yeah. See, so um, I have no doubt. A house that has fallen, you don't ask whether the roof is still standing. <laughs> I'm sure today, um, 
the two political parties yeah. have records. Mm -hmm. The NDC has a record. The MPP has a record. Mm. His Excellency President Nana mm. Kufado has a record. President Mama has a record. Yeah. Mm. And so today you are beginning to see that uh, one manifesto, which is a people's manifesto, mm -hmm. and the other, which is, uh, I don't know how to call that one, a manifesto. <laughs> Now, you won't know. It's an understanding that you don't know. The, no, I'm sure I'm just looking at the mm. qualitative difference. Today, we yeah. are all discussing one manifesto seems to be predominant. Mm -hmm. and maybe I'll leave that to you to, to determine which has been predominant. All right. Well, I wouldn't know. So, which has been predominant? <laughs> no, which has been discussed more? <laughs> but, 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 you know, um, we always talk about mm. politics of insults, um, attacking people's personalities, and all that. Now that we have both manifestos that um, we can be debating on issues, yes. what do you say to? Your followers, because most yeah. of the times you at the top are friends, you are, you know, being civil, you shake hands and but everything. those who are following you are fighting, insulting and all that. What do you say to these people? Yeah, you see, I've always said that. You see, when a cow is chewing grass, the calf watches his mother's mouth mm -hmm. so that it can perfect the art of chewing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I have always said that those of us who are entrusted with leadership mm -hmm. must set good example. Mm -hmm. You see, it is only a man who cannot stand rational argument, who converts argument into a fight. Mm. If, if you know that you have a very good case to make, why resort to insults? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the politics of insults obscures the, 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 the merit that should come out from rational argument. Mm. So if you have a rational and convincing argument to make, <laughs> why insult? Mm. Yeah. I can make my point without, being, without yeah. sounding insulting. Yeah. So I have never ascribed to the uh, politics of insult. And I've always said that when you see politics of insult taking place, I mean, people have, uh, like this program, you feel that they are walking the logic on upside down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so it is, it is important for us mm. to imbibe and practice the politics of decency, mm. decorum. Mm. We must have respect for one another, even yeah. in our divergence. Divergence shouldn't necessarily be hostile. Yeah. Mm. yeah you, 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 can, you can have a convergence of. Uh, certain larger interests. We have yeah. a collective interest to make this country peaceful. Of yes. course. All of us want that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. whether you are MPP, you are NDC, you are CPP, you are UGM, whatever political party, yeah. mm -hmm. there's a convergence of mm. interests on that line. Mm. But beyond, beyond politics, how do you unwind? I mean, in your leisure time, what do you do? Uh, a lot of the time, I like reading. I read. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I also like watching documentaries. Okay. 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 And above all, I like arguments. <laughs> <laughs> on right, that uh, note, yeah, we will uh, not continue. Yes, I think before Honorable leaves us, you should just give us your favorite proverb. Oh, um, you see, the, the, the proverb is to illustrate a certain situation in which you are, mm. or certain situations you want to express mm -hmm. certain positions on. Okay. Mm. So, um, so your current position the, is? The, there cannot be... Uh, uh, a situation where you are selling sheer butter and your feet will be white. Mm -hmm. mm. Or, like you said, you are living by the banks of a river and washing your hands with spit. Yeah. It, is, it is a situation of what comes up that you use to illustrate a particular point yeah. that you make it. Okay, so we are closing. Hello and welcome to the City Newsroom. My name is Zoe Abubedu Adu. And I am Bobi Osei. Coming up. Police arrest four more people in connection with last Friday's secessionist disturbances in the Volta region.
He has to speak about uh, four uh, people for interrogation. Yes. Based on intelligence gathering, we've just picked them to pick information from them. Meanwhile, government says it will soon go after identified financiers of the Westing Togoland Group. Uh, they are also uh, moving in to deal uh, with their sources of funding and persons who uh, we believe are associated with the funding of um, uh, this, this group. Also, EC boss dismisses assertions that the commission has a tendency to manipulate election results. We have no doubt built some transparency and accountability in our processes. As such, there's a tendency for citizens to believe that the Electoral Commission can manipulate the election. And As the exhibition of voters register ends, demonstration hits the Electoral Commission in Avrongo Central over its failure to provide a provisional register at the Zuo Basic School polling station. And later,